I wonder but if Liz Fair is going to laugh at us. I, I, ho- I mean, I hope she I likes think us. I'm just going to be too nervous and <laughs> to be funny, but we'll see. And she seems too cool Anya, to laugh. what are you going to do? Laugh? I'm just here trying to gather enough confidence to, to sit here in the room with you her. Guys, she is my Dave Matthews. Like, Nikki has a Dave Matthews fixation. Yeah. She's the reason I play music. <gasps> You're gonna One make me of them. That's gonna be three. so exciting. To but I'll be you chill. Her. I've met her before. You have? Yeah, I interviewed her years ago, or I was in the room while we were interviewing her. When <laughs> okay, I was that's not even close to what an interview is. She was like, I was in the building. Truthful. I was on the floor. Yeah, and this is Jen <laughs> Indian show. style, what, what, cross-legged like, style. <laughs> I really was. I was in the corner of the room while my. I love how that story peed. started. I interviewed her. I, well, I, was I told myself a story. I interviewed her in the corner, literally in the corner on the carpet, just like trying not to be seen. I can't believe she's here. I sneezed and they asked me to leave because it was a disruption but I we had a great interview <laughs> welcome back to the show it's you up with Nikki Glazer in studio Anya Marina Hannah Burner love having you here and now um singer songwriter rock star feminist uh icon Liz Fair author Liz Fair Woo! is here <laughs> Liz Fair, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm so excited you're here. Um, I'm such a fan. You're such a um, influence to me. Your new book, Horror Stories, is um, it's a memoir, but it's not the kind that you would think from um, that we would expect from you, right? Like these aren't. It's- Someone did a review and said, you don't talk about songwriting or picking up a guitar. There's no mention. You might not know you're a mu- musician if you read this book. Why go in that direction with it? Well, I don't know. The Rockefeller Center incident at the end of the book when I like absolutely, completely don't know where I am in the song on okay. live television well, then and I'm there's... just staring there at the camera. And Howard Stern had a field day about it the next day. Like, um, oh, I had a temperature wow. of 104 and oh. I had just gotten a bikini wax in the green room. <laughs> and Dude. had 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 my hair put into like little Shirley Temple ringlets and I just was I just didn't have it <laughs> so I, wait they, you actually got a bikini wax yes backstage I mean I feel bad for my current boyfriends because <laughs> clearly I cared so much more <laughs> than back then I was like I don't care <laughs> not caring is the best that's what we've been talking about wait so you were about to per- where were you about to perform the tree lighting ceremony oh, at dude. Rockefeller Center. Oh, which they is don't want live. pubes for that. No. And it yeah. was a track. I was singing instead of being with a live band. I was with, I was doing oh, like God. two track, which is not my thing. Mm. I don't ever do that. Mm. And they they turned up the volume in my ears late. So part of the song was already going oh, my by the God. time I heard it start. Oh fuck! So I was off by like a good couple bars. And I realized it halfway through the song when this, the music was clashing with my voice and I just stopped. And I just stared at the camera for like at least 30 <laughs> seconds of just dead air, just like with my Shirley Temple ringlets and my 104 fever and my vagina throbbing, you know. But just looking like, amazing. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, yeah. I haven't gone to that chapter yet. I'm excited. <laughs> like, and I haven't gotten a wax since. <laughs> yeah. I like how you said sugaring. Sugaring. I, oh. Sugaring is good too. Yeah. Yeah. Do they just rub sugar on it? Yeah. <laughs> is it? I haven't really <laughs> looked at it. And your hair you falls off. You just eat candy until <laughs> your body just <laughs> shove Rich a guy bear hair. hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm what a laser you? girl now, but. Oh, you are? Yeah. You got it lasered and no, no more? I'm like. I'm in the process. Oh, wow, yeah. It's a whole process. I couldn't do waxing. I was too sensitive to it. And the whole time I would just, like, curse out whatever guy I was sleeping with. Because, like, I'm not doing it for me. (laughs) Right. I thought you were, like, whatever guy was doing it. I'm like, you had men (laughs) waxing your It's the only way I orgasm. Sorry. I'm sorry, Liz. I'm sorry. I was, like, actually pretty not inappropriate till Liz came in. And I got nervous. Yeah, no. No, that's good. As long as there's someone else who's, you know, word Yeah, yeah. That helps. Thank you. Thank you for the solidarity. I really appreciate that. I like what you talk about in that moment of having your hair done, getting the waxing. There's so much as a performer, as a woman. I'm a stand-up comedian. Anya is a singer-songwriter. She, uh, Hannah's a stand-up comedian. Like, There's so much that goes into your looks and not even what you're out there to do that men don't have to deal with. And what do you have you come to at peace with that? Or you still struggle with that? Do you resent it? Because I'm projecting. I resent it a lot. <laughs> I resent it a lot. It's expensive. Yes. And it's also the last thing that I mean, I love my management to pieces, but that's sort of like 
you know, I have to say like, uh, do I have to look good right now? And yeah. they just assume I just kind of look good all the time. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no. Yes. I go home and I'm like, Wah. and it's like, oh, you got to look good. Okay, here I am. And I'm like, You're everything right. and everything. But there's so many things we have to do. Look at these nails. I came to New York for my book publishing a <laughs> big triumphant thing and I did not get my nails done it's like a thing how dare you not get I brought your gloves I could be like you know hanging out here with like my I could, I would never notice that but we yeah we have to get our nails men don't have to do anything and we're down to our, what do yeah. they do with all Teeth the hours whitening. that they're not Teeth like whitening. getting pretty yeah. <laughs> And then what we have to read books about. They can read. They can study. They can write. They can. Um, yeah, but why are do they? So they, dumb? they do not. They, they watch games sports and they take long shit. Yeah. <laughs> but I would like to do that. Like, it's funny that she said I have to look good because now that I'm like started doing industry stuff, I realize that I'm like, do I have to look good for this? Yes. And then it takes so much. I only have like one time a day to put in my looking good effort. You know, like you have to put away about you, and yes. it's exhausting. Multiple times a day, I can't like do the looking good thing you put your energy into it once and then i'm like done it's so much work men don't have to do it's, it's hours and hours which turns into legit years of our lives mm -hmm. at the end of our lives you can think of i spent a probably two years of my life blow drying my hair <laughs> that's why i love this idea of nikki's going on tour and she's thinking about doing a no makeup tour and i was thinking if you have me open I just want to wear one dress for the whole I want to do that too. <gasps> yes. I never watched Why it. Not? Uniform. Stage outfits. Just one dress. Just it's... the same pink dress. Yeah. I and paid $1,000, you... $1,200 for this fucking dress. You should wear that every single time. <laughs> I'll, I'll wear it too. too. We'll change. Get your money's worth. Do you remember okay. Jenny Lewis's rainbow suit? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did she wear that every night? I think so. And I that thought is that so is just genius. straight up brilliant. Yeah. Yes. But just... What's funny is there will be people that will judge you and be like, I don't like her outfit. Where you never hear like a guy's stand up routine. Or they ever like, I don't like his jacket. Yes. Where that well, you were performing what recently and what did the girl say to you? We and love then, your calves and your boots. And then what and did you think exactly. about your whole show the rest of the time? You had and a then great show. I made show. up a song on the spot about how I was gonna obsess about my figure skating calves the entire way. Because that's how my calves got the way they did, because I was a young athlete Same. and uh, and I was just like I know that's a compliment but I'm gonna be obsessing about the size of my calves the entire way home but yeah. no it was a compliment it was nice but still but it's still why? It's, a man appearance would, appearance I mean, women yeah. are there to look pretty and make you babies that's I what know. I love about you Liz and I have to say like you influence I would not be in music if it wasn't for you I saw you in 94 I think Jewel was opening in ah, San yes. Francisco at the Warfield or film where I can't remember where but I remember, I remember Exile in Guyville on cassette in my Dodge Colt on repeat. And I was like, I can, like, this woman is saying all the things that I cannot even believe I'm allowed to think or say. And you are you are articulating all of our experience in this brave, funny, vulnerable, sweet way. And then you played this show. And I just remember, like, Jewel was engaging and amazing and everything. And I was like, oh, she's cool. And I'll get her record. And... And um, but you were so um, just like this is my voice and this is me and it's real. And you weren't showboaty. It was the first time I'd heard a woman singing with this real voice. And I was like, I bet she talks like that. Like I and I've always loved singers like that who sound like they talk. Like I don't love a a real gymna like vocal gymnastics kind of voice. You know what I mean? Like a no offense to the big pop stars, but like <laughs> I love how natural and real it is. I forgot my point. Well, I hope you forgot <laughs> your point. <laughs> Literally forgot my well, point. I but. know your point because I've heard this several times and I know what Liz Fair means to you yes. in your career. Thank you. Take me back. <laughs> because Where I was, was fascinated I? by the idea of finding your voice as a singer because you you try to probably mimic other people when you're yes. you don't realize it's an instrument that you can choose how it sounds and, and which I'm still learning as just a, a talking performer, but you said that you were struggling with what do I sound like? If I want to write songs and sing, what do I sound like? And then you heard Liz Fair and you were like, what if I just sounded like myself? And then that's yeah. how you found your legitimate voice. Like, what did I you remember, use to sing? Like? I drove around with one of those little tape decks. Liz is dancing. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> but I drove in my Colt, my Dodge Colt, and I remember I'd like try to sing and I'd be like, no, that sounds like Little Orphan Annie because I'd be like belting out like, tomorrow. And then I was like, no, what about tomorrow, tomorrow. And then I finally settled on like, tomorrow. And it was this soft voice, but I kind of got there and I remember playing it back for the 20th time and I was like, 
that sounds kind of close. Like you're getting warmer. And it was not what I thought you should sing like. Because at the time it was like, I don't know, the early 90s or something. Mm. But then you were out, Juliana Hatfield was out, and it, it really gave me the courage to kind of like find my way and write in a, in a new way. So anyway, thank you for that. Thank you for that story. That's really touching. I'm going to be thinking about that. I mean, it's it's a lovely idea. You were like searching for your own voice. You were slowly peeling off the layers. Yours. <laughs> 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 you, I think I remembered why I started this because if you're, uh, we were talking about women's issues sort of and feminism, weren't we now? Like being in a male dominated industry or world. And um, I love that you always seem to love men and you were strong and you were that you were a you know a a capable woman killing it and making your way and and having a career you never like slammed men but you would talk openly about what was what it was like to like get a record deal or like be in this male dominated city chicago where you came up and did exile in guyville and i'm so curious about what that's like for you like how it's been over the years cuz now it's like decades later you're still doing music. You're still killing it. You've done lots and of different I'm things. And I'm about to share something that I really shouldn't share. Um, Good. And I'm still clocking men. <laughs> and I'm still like... On, yeah. the, on this show, you're going to yeah. share it? Am I? Please do. Okay. <laughs> so now I'm going to regret this. So w- we did Kennedy the show last night. So we're like standing outside of Fox News, which I politically do not agree with at all. So I was kind of like, you know, my boots are digging into the pavement I'm just like I don't know if I can go in here <laughs> and you know everybody was so nice to us and it ended up being like a wonderful example of like hey people are people we can recover as a country kind of feeling but we're standing in the lobby and we're meeting the hair and makeup women that are gonna do I mean everyone's sort of talking and I'm there with my manager and a publicist from the book and I turn and I see this tall drink of water and I'm like what and I just like <laughs> clock these shoes in this fine looking suit and this dude walks past and I just kind of catch his side in the back of him and I'm like I think I actually said out loud like hey now or something like (laughs) not that he could hear like I know he couldn't hear but it was just this kind of like spontaneous like hey now and it was Eric Trump oh Oh my god (laughs) (laughs) and I'm like I can never Live this down for the rest of time. Big exclusive on that Nikki Glaser. So you up. funny. I thought she was gonna say Dan Soder for a second. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't. I can't wash my brain. I know who I am now, <laughs> and right. I know who's driving. Oh, Your vagina. <laughs> God, that's so good. No, I love being able to like be such a strong feminist, and then being like, and I love men. Yes, I love them. I yes. love all of them well, as that's long what as always, you let me be me I always get told yes. I'm a man hater what's wrong with that world mm-hmm. can we all just live in that world mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what world sorry that you I love men as long as they let me be me yes we were talking about like I'm not about being like men and women are equal no we're very different and let's mm-hmm. embrace our beautiful differences emotionally physically and simultaneously exist yes a thousand percent yeah, I, but Holla, lighters up. I <laughs> lighters up for sure. I just I want to start saying that. that yeah, was that's cool. Re- it was wasn't that cool? I said it like I like you like try to say it. I too. said it after to like cement it in my mind as like <laughs> that's the thing up. you say now. It didn't come out the same as when she said it though. Did it, it, it's no, actually it something you said eight years ago. I'm not kidding. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. Do not follow my lead. Please. No, I think it's coming back. I, I think lighters well. up is back yeah. in 2019. It's so much better than iPhones up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my god! Um, I just rub two sticks together. Up. I do it really old school. Um, I um, what I, I've been channeling you recently, and I realize um, your song uh, "Fucking Run," which is one of my favorite songs of all time. Um, there, I, I I always am reluctant to share it on my social media because it's I'm always feeling it, and I it's always my mood. Like if you put out a song that's like this is my mood, it's that song is literally always my mood For, since I heard it, since it was introduced to me by my English professor who I became friends with, who knew what? I struggled with. Yeah, he was. It's not creepy. You're freaking. But he, it was in it was in college, and he's one of my best friends. He's brilliant, but he was like, "Have you ever heard of Liz Fair? And I was like, "Of course." And he's like, "But this song," and he I, I've been obsessed with that song ever since. But it's so it just explains what it's like to be a single woman kind of like sleeping around and figuring out who you are but then 
the the core I don't know if, even if it's the chorus, but it's just like I want a boyfriend. I want a bo-. and it's I can never share it because that is I feel too seen in that part <laughs> and it's too it's too vulnerable for me to admit that. But but in 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 avoiding putting that on my Instagram because I've I've been tempted to so many times of just like this song is me every girl needs to hear it I want girls to hear the song it's me it's helped me through so many times that song in my life just knowing that you're like this cool badass chick who has felt the same way I felt of just I, I, I'm trying to get these guys to love me I'm sleeping around I'm like hooking up and and then they abandon me the next day and they make up excuses that they have to go get a lot of work done when I know they yeah. don't and I know as soon as I leave you they're gonna don't have a yeah. job they're gonna go back to sleep. <laughs> Recently, you don't have, you a, don't job. have a job. I know you don't have to go to work. <laughs> Your app that you're creating is not a thing. Yeah, he's talking about plastic surgery. He's getting a lot of work done later yeah. on. Um, but I recently have started on stage. I've opened. I opened my next kind of special. I go, guys. Um, so like, I want a boyfriend. I want a boyfriend yeah. so bad. And I didn't even realize it till right now when we opened with your song this morning that that I stole that from you. I literally stole your lyric and injected it into my stand up because <laughs> I do want a boyfriend and I don't want to be scared about saying it anymore because it's like this thing that you're not supposed to admit as a woman. It's too vulnerable. It's like and no one wants to be Desperate a boyfriend. Or something. Yeah, and like guys are always just trying it's just I keep telling guys like stop not wanting to be my boyfriend. <laughs> like if you could as collectively just all stop that. But I can't get a boyfriend to save my life. But in in saying that on stage, it's felt so freeing. And I really thank you for that. And I didn't put it together until now. But like, I'm I'm like quoting Liz Fair in my special, the De- which is part of the Degenerates, is coming out on Netflix. But it's totally inspired by you. Ah, thank you. Do you have a boyfriend? I do not, and the same thing just happened to me. Like I was flirting around and kind of casually dating this guy that I was very clear that I, I was looking for a relationship, and he was like, "Well, I am not." And then like back and forthy, back and forthy, and it just it like it finally no, it still ended up as well. I am looking for a boyfriend, and I am not. And you get that feeling. It's like what what is it? Like is 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 this going to get any better? Or is it only going to get worse? <sighs> I have this terrible feeling. That it might not be getting better, you know. Like, what? How are women's emotional needs going to be met in the world of hookup culture? Is my question. Great question. (laughs) It's it's crazy too because you both are so successful in your careers and like fulfilled on paper in terms of like accomplishments, and but it's it's great to be like, and I want someone to share that with, but also. Yeah, it's human nature to want to share. I'm so frustrated by it, though, because you're right. Like, I hear you saying you don't have a boyfriend. I'm like, why don't you? You can have anything, Liz Fair. And I could say that about myself. And I really do feel that way. Like, I I get everything I want in my career. I mean, it's been struggles, and I've had rejections, and there are things I want and I'm still aiming towards. But I'm like, I know I'm going to get it. Like, if I really work hard enough, I've proven to myself I can do it. But I really want a boyfriend, and I cannot get one. And I feel like I don't know what to do anymore. Like I just feel like, like you said, it's. I'm kind of realizing like it might be. Well, it might be. It might be might this time happen. in history. It might be that as women work more and they're more independent and more financially independent, and yet we still have the the. And I know we all have it in the backs of our minds, like. There's a fire in the living room, and my husband is reading the paper, <laughs> and man. I have just made fresh brioche. <laughs> and look, there's the dog in from outside, and he smells like cold air. Like that will always haunt me. Like I, can I grew listen up to her wanting... talk all day. Long. <laughs> yeah. no. her voice. That's I want that, and yet all my choices lead me toward art rather than that. So I'm part of this. Yes. Do you know? And I just I don't know if. If this is just, you know, 50 years from now, they'll have it sorted and we're just the casualties. <laughs> yeah. of the, Are you I mean, that like, might be true. It like might men be, need Liz. to evolve. Like because we men need to realize that like we're changing. We're not just waiting for them and we're doing our careers and and men need to evolve to realize like we're a different type of woman now. But, like because you're but we choosing have to change your our career. fantasies, too. Mm. Yeah. Sadly. And we don't want to because we still have we're still of a generation that's and I'm not in your generation, actually, but 
la- big picture uh-huh. I am. Uh-huh. We're still and you've growing inspired up our on the fairy tales, which is why my next book is called Fairy Tales. Like mm. that, we still have that same sort of like. If you think about your actions and my actions, do we aim toward that like sofa image? No, we don't. No, every we action haven't. we take every day is career, career, art, art. And yet we're like, but where's my happy it's, ending? Are you so, fan- is your fantasy changing? No, it's the same fantasy I've <laughs> yes. always had. Yep. But you're I right. mean, would I like it to be in a grand castle? And she's mm. going to be like, yes, I would. Is it in <laughs> like, a beach Because once you're fantasizing, there's no stopping it. You know, you're like, is it oh. an older man? Is it a younger man? Is it Eric Trump? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll never, you'll never live it down. <laughs> no, but I mean, is it like, a, is it a surfer guy? Is it... Ooh, a skater oh, help boy. Me, help me, do you help find me. that you're attracted aside from Eric, do you find that you're <laughs> attracted to like the bad boys or musicians like no, me? I, I I think my taste in men is very good. I mean, oh. I really think I have great taste in men, but I don't think I pick someone that just screams security and stability. Yeah. I think I go for someone I want someone that has like a bigger personality than mine actually I want to I want it's it's too conflicted do you see how yep. the conflict exists in me and probably exists in all of you I want someone to be make my knees I want to I want to be like oh wow no he's really smart like you know he'll tell you or I want to feel <laughs> yeah, that feminine, the feminine energy lean yes. into the man like we've got a book well, for we've you. got a book for you <laughs> you know like <laughs> But, but all my this. actions lead me the other direction. I'm like Alice in Wonderland, like walking toward the house, and I find that I'm walking away from it. Walking toward the house, and I find that I'm walking away yeah. from it. Yeah. I mean, you hit on something that I just came across this week. I'm having all these epiphanies that you're facilitating uh, today. <laughs> but, like, it's, it's, but this is true. It's like I... I complain about not having a boyfriend, but guess what? I haven't put that, the effort has gone into my career. Right. I have sacrificed, it's, it seems so trite to say, like I've sacrificed so much for my career, but I look at my sister's life and she's married with kids, but she's a teacher. Like she didn't go for a career that was gonna dominate her life in her every waking second and make her, un- I don't have time to date. I don't have time for a man in my life. And I complain that I don't have one, but it's, I've chosen a career over a man and I will I was thinking this I was thinking this this morning if someone said to me you can do SNL in January you'll host SNL or you can have the love of your life and have the most romantic adventure of your life which one would you choose SNL I would cho- I would <laughs> every choose damn every time. time every time every time and that's not to say that you'll never do SNL if you choose the romantic but I I just I want that now awesome. and even though all I think about is boyfriends I don't think about Nikki, SNL if ever. you really want a boyfriend you could have you can have a boyfriend, but you also have standards. Yes. So let's yes. factor that in too. I well, I want the Uh-oh. kind of guy I what, want. What which, kind do of you also go for unavailable men? Probably because I, I want built in yes. space. I want built in space. I need someone as my friend put it, she said, You need someone who's geographically inconvenient mm-hmm. because I need a lot of like just alone time or my own thing time. I'm I'm not good with latching onto someone and staying side by side all the time. You're like, I want a lot of attention and space. Figure it out. I like (laughs) Friday through Sunday. Figure it out. Yes. (laughs) Hence. Yeah. Um, We have to go to, we have to go, but Liz Fair, we didn't even talk about your book and I'm so sorry, but you need to get Liz Fair's book. It's so good. It's called Horror Stories. I want to read it. It's all stories from her life about the human condition. and So well written. Oh yeah. Anya goes, Anya goes, I can't believe, I know she's a great singer songwriter and, and, and obviously wrote amazing music, but she is so amazing at prose and I can't wait to just sink my teeth into this book I've already gotten so much from one song you wrote that has seriously taken me through the years um, I love you so much thank you for being here thank you for sharing that story that exclusive story with that we'll, ex- <laughs> we'll, we'll use against yes. you in yes. future forever times. but uh, check out Liz Fair's new book Horror Stories out now out yesterday as of yesterday Horror Stories Liz Fair um, if you're not into her get into her and if you've always been into her get her, sto- uh, get her book Horror Stories we'll be back with more show after this thank you Liz Fair thank you guys we went to a pool party and neither one of us went in the pool or in the sun no, I we can't. We just sat stand around it. and talked about relationships and I don't know, and men being horrible. We but did? at a pool party. You did. At a pool party. Yeah. Instead of being fun and like enjoying yourself and maybe like well, you could have gone in the pool. There were people in the pool. I don't know, my tits you... are fat right now. Oh, is that why you didn't go in the yeah, pool? Yeah, I didn't want to wear a t shirt because I saw how a, a absurd Ray looked. Oh my god, our friend Ray was just wearing a t shirt in the pool. That was insane. Did, it, did people make fun of him for that? I didn't even get a chance to. It was 
too sad. It was so weird. I don't think he has that bad of a body. No, he doesn't. Just New Yorkers, when you go from New York, you never show your body. And then next thing you know, you're in California. So much sunlight. I don't understand. I, I, I cannot comfortably go from wearing clothes, like going to the pool. I have to already be in a swimsuit when I go to the pool. I cannot be out there and go like, I'm yeah. ready to get in the water. Like, it's undressing in front of men. It is wearing... It's wearing underwear in front of men, which I am not comfortable with. You could see vaginas at the pool. Yeah, you you could see everything. Yeah. When you were, I, I don't think I'm weird, but girls just like can wear bikinis in front of men. I cannot do it. I can't do it. I'm too, unco especially my male friends. Then they're gonna look at me sexually, and I just like then it's. Th if I wore a speedo at the pool, all I'd keep thinking about is, is my dick. Is there blood in my dick? Is there blood in my dick? Why blood? Like, is my dick thick? Does my dick look like it's oh. fucking healthy? Like, do I have a meat cock in my pants? That's all I would be, keep thinking. And right. then I would be like, but don't have too thick of a cock because then it'll look like you're hard. Because you, there's a middle ground a guy has. But you have trunks. Huh? Yes, but I'm saying, I, I'm trying to relate to being a woman. So yeah, like, if I was Yeah, but we don't have dicks. So there's nothing to, like, I'm not worried about something looking big or bulging. No, but you're worried about people. Some women probably worry, is like, are my lips showing? Can you see no, the indentions? No, it's not about that. It's just like about I'm naked in front of men who I want yeah. to like look at me as a friend, and like men are visual. Oh, so creatures. you're not worried that people can see your pussy? No, oh. no, I'm worried that men are like can see my like that men will are gonna get turned on, mm. and then the dynamic will change, and then I can't have normal conversations with them. Or they'll, then they'll think about it later and maybe jerk off to me, and I don't want my friends, like, even thinking about me that way, or, like... So you just want even... that at a, at a distance. What? You want that at a distance. Want what? A... You want people to be attracted to you. I mean, you've talked yeah, about that all the time. Yeah, but not my male... Not the, my friends. Not, yes. like, the men that were all there. Like, if there was a guy there that I was into, I wouldn't have cared that my guy friends were there. But I... There wasn't anyone I was trying to, like, get into. So if you're into a guy, you could be in a bikini easier? Yes. See, so I, much easier. I couldn't be shirtless if I wanted. Well, I like my body. Yeah. And I work hard on it. Yeah. There's also it's a waste. I mean, I'm not doing anything with it. It's truly a waste. I don't know why I've had a good body for the past six years. It's just like who's seeing it? I don't even care. I mean, I guess it when looks you good with clothes on. Do you, does it turn you on to be more fit? No. Sometimes no. I'll touch I don't my even own look at myself when I jerk off. What? Sometimes I'll pinch my own nipples when I jerk off. To make them hard so they don't look soft and puffy? <laughs> well, or that's one of the things, good. and it kind of feels good. Sometimes I'll play with my own taint while I jerk off. Is that bad? You didn't have to say that. Why not? Do I you guys know. do that? Don't ask. Oh, that's sorry. That's harassment, oh, I and didn't they're know. shaking I didn't their know. head no. I thought, I thought we were all family. No, no. <laughs> we, you, you wouldn't be able to recognize these guys in a lineup sorry, in guys. an hour. Sorry about that. Hey guys, you just watched a clip from my radio show, You Up With Nikki Glazer, that you can hear every morning on Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM Channel 95, 10 to 12 Eastern. And uh, you can check out a clip here on YouTube every Tuesday. Or check out my podcast. No!